Hello, good evening. Before we start, is there any question that you would like me to uh, answer or should I start? Just let me know. Sure, uh, we can keep it in the end. No problem. We can keep that in the end and we will start with, firstly, we'll start with the club one group and how do we go about with it? So I believe most of the candidates that we have here um, would want to know about the plab one. Uh, plab one, uh, plab one would not be plab two. Uh, not not the information regarding the plab. So what I will do, I'll just share my screen with you people. Just give me a second. All right. So for plab one route, we first start GMC. GMC registration. Uh, Doctor Shella, can you please check your mic? Your voice is just echoing. So, can you please check so the website for GMC registration, basically, we go there, we make a GMC account. We put in our first thing that we put in the document that we need is the MBBS degree. And name of your college. All right. First, doing that, we get the provisional provisional GMC number. All right. After that, we would be okay. Just give me a minute. I think you're not able to hear me well. Is it better now? Is the echo still there? Uh, yes. Yeah, Dr. Shella, it's better, but it was echoing just a moment ago. So maybe, maybe you can, you know, try again. Uh, it seems like your voice is very low. Like it's coming from very far distance. It is it's something like that. The adjustment of the voice is just the same as I used to take to the class. Yeah, now it's Let better. Know if it is it's not good, good, I will try to do something about it. All right, it's better. First, now. we get the provisional GMC registration. Then we go for either OET or IELTS. OET, you need to get OET, you need to get band B. IELTS, you need to get 7.5 score. Individual. Individually and 7 score. Overall. All right. Now, uh, since recent years, basically students go with OET. Why OET? It is more uh, professional friendly, I would say. And it also has the same reading, writing, listening, and speaking parts. But it is all medical, medical related. Medical related mean reading, uh, meaning that in the reading section, you will be giving, um, given a, a paragraph regarding uh, some medical history. A conversation between a doctor and a patient so it becomes easier that way in writing you would have to write a left referral letter listening again a conversation between a patient and a doctor or maybe a nurse telling a doctor about the patient's condition something like that speaking you will be given a condition on which you will be talking about so it is easier to uh, the uh, doc uh, do OET compared to IELTS because you're basically being in the within the 
medical uh, fees. And you are talking about the same terminologies that you would be that you will be discussing in the hospital. So that way, OET becomes much easier, and scoring uh, band scores in that uh, scoring in uh, OET becomes easier. One thing that I want to talk about, which is very important right now, is stand alone. Now, if you have a band score. of 400 and above in OET. So there's a thing, there is a program called Standalone that occurs, uh, that's there in UK, in which you don't have to do, uh, you have, you can just go for foundation, this is, called, this is foundation training, FY1. So the candidates who are going in for after their house job, so this is very, uh, this is a very good program for them because for uh, SHO level or FY2 level, you need a two year, program, a two year uh, training, program, two years of training. For SHO or FY2. Okay. So in that case, when you go for standalone, you don't need maybe just a one year house job or internship can help you get into this program. But over there, to get into this standalone, you need to have a band score of 48 and above 400 or above in OET. So when you go for OET, you can make this a point and you can score better. No, or 400 in all subjects because a band. Uh, Band B starts from 300, uh, 310, I believe, or about. So for 400, it is in all subjects, all the subtests, like uh, reading, writing, listening, and speaking. Candidates sometimes do two years of internship, not speciality. Because after, B, after giving PLAB, getting registered with the GMC, you will be um, uh, you will be entitled for a job as an SHO level or a FY2 level. After doing this, after working there for maybe three months, six months, minimum three months, there's exam called as MSRA, the Speciality Multi-Speciality Recruitment Assessment, MRSA, MRSA, which is MSRA, sorry. MSR Multi Speciality Recruitment Sorry and Assessment. Okay. Yes, you have to give MSRA after this. But uh, when, once you give this MSRA, you can get into uh, not for all. It is basically for ER, uh, a GP exam, and Ghanaian of so far. All right. But it, um, other specialities have um, started being added to it. All right, so once you give the MSRA, then after that, you can get into a speciality, uh, a training speciality. All right, this is about uh, how you go about. So with, uh, we were somewhere here, OAT. After OAT, we go to lab one registration. After we pass plus one, we go for plus two. All right. So um, here at Med, Med uh, Exam Expert, we provide guidelines and training for both plus one and uh, for OAT and plus one. Yes, MSRA is conducted by UK authorities. Exactly. Uh, if you're already into a training here, uh, back home here in Pakistan or in India, wherever you can be given. 
No, we cannot. We're not eligible for MSRA before we uh, we have done GMC registration. But yes, if you're in a training post here and you've passed your uh, PLAB, you or have a GMC. Uh, MRCG part one does not help in getting an MSRA, but uh, you still need to give you because uh, give your PLAB one. Uh, uh, you need still need to give MSRA. But for all that, you need to have a GMC registration. So GMC registration, if you want into a training a training post, is is how you get get it through lab one and lab two, a quicker route. In uh, and once you have done your MRCUG part three, uh, then you don't really need to have an MSRA. You've already done it. Okay. You're welcome. Any other question? So here in um, med exam, we provide support and courses for OET and PLAB1, both. So any other question uh, regarding these all? I hope things are clear. Yes, uh, yes. MSRA you can only do after GMC registration, that is PLAB1 and PLAB2. And uh, earlier it was that if you're working in UK. Now it is just my Dr. Asif, I'll just get to you. Okay, so what you basically in MSRA, what happens is if you do MSRA, um, you have done your GMC registration, you're already working here, uh, back home you're working anywhere in the, in the, in the world you're working. Um, uh, then what happens is that you, because you have a GMC registration, so if you form, uh, if you have the trust form and it's signed by your supervisor or consultant, then also you can go for uh, MSRA before going to UK. But GMC registration is important for that. Okay, and there was another question. Just give me a minute. Okay, uh, difference or changes from PLAV1 to UK MLA now? Yes, there is differences. Differences, the course content is entirely the same. Initially, PLAV1 had smaller scenarios. Now the scenarios have increased, all right? The course, the blueprint, blueprint meaning the topics that are, that, that are tested in, um, uh, in all the specialities like that is respiration, cardiology, endocrinology, GI, and epidemiology, genetics, and all, all are have the same topics. But the thing is now they have a bigger case scenarios. Uh, so that initially as well, we had, we had 180 questions, 180 minutes. All right, that means one minute per question. You don't have time to look here and there when you are doing your PLAB questions. All right. Trust me, when you do MRCUG, you do have time. If you do MRTP as well, any other speciality exam, you do have time. Like you can sit and think for a second. But here, the clock keeps on ticking. You cannot, uh, you cannot uh, think, okay, fine, uh, I'll, I, I'll read this through. It's a bigger scenario entire page scenario. So here at med exam, we try to train our candidates in such a way that they're able to complete their paper on time. And if possible, they can have like three, four, five minutes extra so that they could revise the topics or the questions that they have doubts about. All right. So this can only be done with good practice. Practice, good practice, and knowing the topics well. All right, this is the reason why at med exam we focus on certain points like reading the options first, marking the important points so that you are able to uh, answer the topic answer the questions well. Yes, Dr. Uvash, uh, you had a question. You have raised hand. 
हेलो हेलो यस यू के एम एल ए हैज द सेम पेपर वर्ल्ड वाइड ओके एक्चुअली दैट्स माय क्वेश्चन प्लीज रिसेंटली ब्लैक यस क्लावन हैज जस्ट वन पेपर नॉट टू पेपर्स इट इज जस्ट वन पेपर ऑफ 180 क्वेश्चंस एंड पासिंग परसेंटेज ऑलवेज चेंजेस यू नीड टू हैव uh 63 68 69 sometimes 70% and above all right so percentage just keeps on changing um um so the paper is the same uh worldwide entirely uh somebody's asking for um link for live stream uh Can you can you get, share the link for live stream uh, host? Okay, so we have one minute per question, and we have one eighty questions. Topics covered are all the same. We start with respiration. We have about one. Uh, we have about thirty two, thirty two topics. okay respiration cardiovascular er neuro rheumatology endocrinology and ent i these are the topics gynae and ops so gynecology and obstetrics the nitro urinary okay and uh, neurology uh, much more pharmacology is separately there critical medicine critical care so these are the topics now what is uh, i know we all do mbbs and we all practice we have studied so what is different from lab 1 and the rest of the topics uh, the rest of the exams that we give so what it's different it's the way you approach the exam it is the way that uh, they ask you the question it is very different from the way that we approach the exams here now there you will be given a scenario a, maybe more than a half page scenario you could be asked about the most appropriate diagnosis initial uh, sorry initial investigation gold standard investigations all right initial management here also most appropriate investigation and most appropriate management so when we are covering a topic any topic so we do mark out what would be the most appropriate investigation for example you have a patient with dka they will be giving you all the signs and symptoms of dka like asthma breathing um uh, dehydration uh, high sugar levels uh, investigations and they will be asking you what is the most appropriate management so the most appropriate management over there would be most appropriate management would be iv fluids not going to insulin not insulin not potassium replacement or they could give you uh, yes doctor dishan just give me a second or they can give you the entire management as well like had been uh, started with iv fluids and giving you that potassium was low ask you the same question that uh, what is the next management yes dr zisha uh, what do you want to know i cannot hear you can you can type in your message dr zisha you could type in your message
All right. So any other questions regarding any query regarding club one? Questions are uh, uh, the topics do repeat. The questions as such, uh, the entire question doesn't repeat that way. They usually twist it. Um, uh, how many pathways for CLAB? There's just one pathway for CLAB. CLAB one, CLAB two. Um, CLAB itself is a uh, is a exam. So, uh, past papers recalled, yes, but not. Not recalls in the sense of questions, but in the sense of topics. Yes, this topic was there last time. This topic was there a time before that. Like last time we had uh last last time we had a lot of uh, pharmacology. Time before that we have uh, a lot of uh, neurology, dementia. They covered a lot of dementia in neurology. So this is how it is. But they don't repeat the scenarios. Okay. Yes, Dr. Asif, um, one minute per question is very difficult. No doubt about that. That's the reason. Uh, that's that's why we here at MedExam Expert try to, uh, you know, incorporate that expertise on the topic as much as we can by giving you classes, telling you what to focus on and making you practice the questions because we have the Q bank. Uh, Plug one and UK MLA, um, Course content, the blueprint is the same. All right, it's the same. Only thing is they have increased or uh, elongated the scenarios, a bigger scenario, because if you have a bigger scenario, you're going to take a lot more time to read the entire scenario, right? So they don't really need to make the topic difficult or the paper difficult. They are going to give you a difficult time management, difficulty in time management. As far as I remember in Pakistan, when we used to give papers, uh, there uh, was ample time. Students used to look here and there as well. But when you're going to go and sit for club one, you wouldn't have any time to look here and there. I mean, not even to have a bite of anything that you take along or water. Even not that, because you'll be so conscious about time, uh, missing out on time. Uh, oh, somebody asked me, yes, they are the same thing. What's the difference or changes? Changes are about the scenarios. Uh, how much marks are required in OET for CLAB? Uh, marks, it's a band B that is required. Uh, Dr. Bumuki, it's uh, a band B that is required. I think uh, we can even share with you OET uh, link. See, one thing is saturation and one thing is your own luck as well and your... Uh, own motivation yes there is uh, there is a difficult time but people are uh, getting jobs uh, uh thing that what really happens is after a couple of years couple of years like two or three or four years there comes a big gap because people tend to move from uk to either australia canada now canada has opened up their thing as well and they are taking more of uk uh trained doctors especially for gp uh yes uk is a good option uk is a shorter pathway compared to the other pathway and uh, saturation as far as i would say saturation it's all your luck that depends on you how you can uh you go ahead because even if you give uk uh us emily then you have to wait for your match again that's a wait of about six months four months a year or two years right so that's the same thing with UK, uh, um, with uh, uh, Club One, that is uh, UK, MD, UK MD. So the thing what most of the candidates do, and I know a lot of people other than um, me and myself as well, I'm doing my training here in Pakistan at the moment. And that's my thing. And there are few other doctors who are doing their training right now here in Pakistan or any part of the world they are working right now. And then gradually they move because they go on a higher pay scale. You get my point. They don't go on an FY2 uh, and, at an SHO level. They have their GMC registrations and license. After a year, if you do not, uh, you're not able to get a job or you're not in the plan of getting a job right now, you just 
get stay with your registration and as soon as you uh, i'll come to that question doctor about uh, australia and as soon as you think that yes you are in a better position uh, you've worked on, well on your cv like after doing house job internship of a year it's difficult to get it but after a certain period of time when you have done more worked more in a particular field or a particular speciality or any speciality then you have more chances of getting in like having your als done uh, how good are you with other things publication research not always publication research but other things as well okay uh, uh last question my side keeping all the pounds and pounds in mind is australia better than uk uh, Australia can be better than UK, but Australia again is very expensive compared to UK. Uh, AMC is expensive than UK pathway. What candidates usually do is, and what even I have in mind at the time, start cover up a year in UK, get their training uh, of a year training from UK, and know a lot of uh, GP and um, uh, from uh, people from acute medicine who have shifted to Australia especially Sydney and uh, Alberta. It's, I'm, I'm right, Alberta, uh, the place. So that's what they do. Take a year uh, training from UK and then shift. You're in a better position after a year to shift either to uh, Australia and Canada, not America, but uh, and in the Middle East as well. You get a very good pay scale in Middle East if you have done your PLAB, PLAB UMC registration, and a year in UK. Most of the candidates even do that. The senior candidates do that. This is it. How much time after OET is required to register for cloud one exam? Immediately, as soon as you get your result uh, of cloud one, you can register for uh, uh, you can register for uh, your cloud one exam. That is when you get the dates. And sometimes such happens is that sometimes some people just uh, you know skip the dates, leave the dates, uh, and um, and what you say. Uh, they don't sit for exam, they cancel their seats. So that is also when you get that get the seats. Uh, there are a lot of resources. One other resource is uh, a med exam expert where we provide you with live sessions, uh, question answer sessions, and we have our entire QBank, mocks that occur. So yes, one of the resources is med exam experts. So everywhere you will find MCQs, but you will not find lectures on topics where you have to focus, how you have to focus, and how you have to prepare, how you have to approach your uh, question uh, uh, anywhere else but med exam expert. Any other question? So shall we move on to our arterial blood gases or any questions there? Ideally, preferably, uh, PLAB1 cost. I am not really sure what's the cost for PLAB1. Um, somebody in the host side could uh, tell us about the cost for PLAB1. 268 pounds. Yes, now you could convert it and see in part two piece. 268 pounds. So that's the cost. And how much time is required depends on the candidate. Some candidates who have a big uh, gap, career gap, which we take, usually us females do take. For me, I required about five to six months because I was not even in the medicine pathway. I was in the gynae ops pathway. But the candidates who are already within the medicine pathway practicing, they would just require uh, three months. Three months is enough. But yes, vigorous attempts, vigorous studies. Yes, yes, you can get into a residency program. That is a training. That is speciality training. OBG pathways and MRC2, yes. I'll come to that, Dr. Sherry. Just give me a minute. So residency program is the tra specialty training program. Yes, you can get into it after GMC registration. That is after PLAB. Okay. So GMC registration, there's pathways of getting into GMC, uh, getting your GMC registration. But getting into a training is not just uh, with GMC. Uh, uh, sorry. Uh, see, for GMC registration, there are many pathways. PLAB is one of the pathways. Other pathway is completing your speciality exams, like for a Marshall G part 
MRCO2. You have part one, part two, part three. Then you can get your GMC registration after giving OET. All right. But you will not be getting into a um, training course. Uh, okay. But with GMC registration, part two pathway, you are in initial state where you can go and join a training course. Okay. Okay. And OBG pathway is a MRCOG pathway. Yes. OB guide pathway is a MRCOG pathway. I got only 80 days. That's why I joined mid exam to get four concepts and what to focus, uh, what not to focus. Hopefully, we all will make it. Yes, inshallah, Dr. Asif. Uh, if you are doing your question answers and you join us, um, tell us what the topics you are uh, difficult, uh, we find difficult, or uh, we can always help you out of the way. No, it is not always necessary to have a clinical attachment before getting into FY1. But uh, if I, uh, clinical attachments sort of help you because uh, you need uh, supervisors. You need uh, what you call uh, people to tell them that, yes, uh, this is a good doctor. So this is something very important. And that when you have a supervisor from there in the UK, that makes a difference. Yes, you have to work. Uh, you have to clear your part two as well and get a GMC registration. And then only you can work in UK. Some people do get the assistant jobs and things like that. But to work as a doctor, physician in UK, you need to have your flap two cleared, flap one, flap two cleared, and your GMC registration. So once you're done with your flap two, you will be doing um uh you will be doing uh your uh, fmg registration giving your documents for verification all your documents for verification put in your timeline and then your gmc registration will be done anyways whenever you we are all here uh, you will be a part you will be having Uh, as I said, Dr. Amir, uh, that when uh, if you are already a practicing doctor, you're in the field, three months are more than enough. But if you're not and you've taken a gap, it depends on how you go about with it, either four months, five months. And it also depends how much time you can give to studies. For flower one, you really need to. The thing is, it's not a difficult exam. It's a different exam than the ones that we are accustomed to. No, if you're doing MRCH, uh, MRCPCH, and if you complete all the parts, then you don't need to take flap. But if you complete one part, part one, and you want to practice in UK or get a special uh, speciality training in UK, then yes, you have to complete your part one, part two, and get GMC registration, and then you can practice in. UK. And MRCPCH uh, experience would be very helpful in getting a job there. No, you don't really need to follow US MLE books for this because exam patterns are different from MLE than compared to uh, and club one. The exam patterns, uh, yeah, Dr. Harvey, just give me a minute with a few questions going on. Research, in, uh, research is important. Yes, it adds, it weighs your CV. It, it adds weight to your CV. That way it is important. But there are doctors who get it without research and publications as well. Have I missed any question? Yes, ALS is important. Uh, in Pakistan, we do ACLS, that's the American board. ALS is the UK board, but that's important. ALS, uh, BLS important, is important. Anything that you have done is important. Any small, um, um, what do you call, management, like if you have set, uh, if you have set up a certain sanitization group, uh, maybe in COVID or in the hospital, any, any participation that you have done, you can always mention that. 
His message to me, or CD strong, and the present GDP position that's very important in other exams. See, uh, Dr. Ahmed and RCP, and uh, this all depends. These are all depends, ifs and buts. Okay. Yes, if you are done in RCP, you have a better chance of getting into it. No, it's not that it's a bad thing that you have gas, but it sees like how much you're working right now. So that is the reason some students go and do attachments over there in Bukhara. They work here in Pakistan or India and, you know, better their CV. They show what they're doing. Uh, basically, you don't make a CV. There are There is a thing called as track jobs. If you search it. Just give me a second, okay? This Mari test for Dubai, I don't Dubai has three DHA, uh, MOH, and uh, a, a hard, hard test. The Mari test, I'm not aware of the Mari test. Okay, so we have drag jobs, a website as drag jobs, and drag jobs. I'm just trying to. Just give me a second. That is the crest form that you're talking about. All right, just give me a second. I have to share with you this. Just give me a second. Now, this is the track jobs website. All right. This is what uh, can you um, elaborate your laws, doctor? So, this is the website for UK job hunt. Okay. Now, this is the health services jobs. Okay. You type in. Um, Foundation. So this is how you go into the jobs, okay? And uh, instead of doing foundation, This is how it opens. Uh, then this is pharmacist jobs. So this is how it all opens up. They give you a qualification, what you need, the skills that you want. They want experience, knowledge. This is another post, but this is how they, this is how they advertise it. So this is the uh, job regarding the um, uh, uh, pharmacist. So that is the same way it comes for, uh, uh, for doctors as well. All right.
letter of recommendation. I'm so sorry. Uh, the letter of recommendation can be from a doctor here in Pakistan as well. Can be from the uh, doctors over there in UK as well. Letter of recommendation can be from any uh, any of the doctors you're working under. That's not a problem. And uh, whoever sends you a letter of recommendation. You need to, uh, uh, they need to have their contacts. Uh, best thing is having a contact on the, uh, what you say, uh, um, uh, uh, their uh, number, uh, their email address. And uh, important thing is uh, numbers, contact numbers. That's important. Yes, if you're completing your MRC PH, that is that is after doctor doctor that has what I said. If you're completing all the threes or all the twos, I don't know about MRCH, MRC PCH. Uh, that how many uh parts do you have? Two parts or three parts? Whatever is complete, then you don't need to follow plan pathway. People follow plan pathway because it is a shorter pathway compared to see giving MRCUG. I'll go for guiding ops okay because that's Fall pathway that I am following. You have to give part one MRCUG. You have to give part two MRCUG. Then you have to give part three MRCUG. So it is not necessary that you will be able to pass in a one go. Compared to all these three exams, flat pathway is easier because it can. It is easier in in uh, in in a form of a subject type of uh, thing, like a, a subject uh, topic wise. It is easier compared to the specialty exam. So that is the reason people go for flat pathway. You can definitely complete your MRC PCH pathway, but how long would it take? How many sittings? Yes, Dr. Saima, it is about ABTs. As soon as we are done with uh, uh, PLAP questions, I will definitely move on to the ABTs. So this is the thing. GMC registration. Next we have, just give me a second. Let's make it clear. So GMC registration. What is required for working in UK have two pathways. Lab one and and speciality. All right. Yes. Uh, okay. This is this is this. Uh, just like uh, letter of recommendation for getting job, ma'am. It is just in your CV. Like letter of recommendation is important. All right. It is important. Uh, see when you are going to put in uh your GMC along with GMC registration, it is important because when you do your GMC registration itself, they take twenty eight days for GMC registration. Once you put your documents into GMC registration, they will be asking you, uh, if you work in the MOH, they will be asking you uh, to contact the MOH. They will be giving you a Gen 1 form. This is a Gen, Gen 1 form. All right. This Gen 1 form has to be signed by the consultant you have been working as well. All right. So that is kind of a recommendation. That's kind of a recommendation that you give for GMC. So once you are given that, only after that, you're going to be getting your GMC registration done. And once when you start putting in your CV via track jobs or NHS jobs, basically you fill in those forms. You put in things over there that is written tight. Uh, they don't take up any uh, letter. You cannot put a letter attachment. All right. So don't need to give a, a letter of recommendation there. But yes, you need to give uh, the numbers, uh, contact details of the people or the consultants you've worked under. That is important. Can we work after MRCP GP International in the UK? I saw one news that NHS last year. They will be starting accepting MRCP into the account. They will be fine. This one. No, Dr. Saima, even I saw that news, but uh, I didn't find anything after that. Uh, after that. Uh, I don't think so. International, uh, international. They have two pathways, like international, uh, G MRC GP, and MRC GP for the UKs. That's totally different. Yes, it does make chances more, uh, Doctor Asif. It does make chances. 
Okay. Can we start ABGs now? Any more questions? All right. So arterial blood gases. So, first thing when we start with an arterial blood gas, uh, I haven't put in how do we take it, but we take it from an artery, usually a radial artery, femoral artery, or uh, carotid, but mostly it's taken from the brachial artery, or the radial artery, sorry, the radial artery. So these three uh, uh, arteries are the ones that are used to take ABGs, and it's taken in a hypernized syringe, and usually taken at the angle of uh, 45 degrees, and it is it is pulsatile, you really not, do not need to pull up the plunger, it comes up by itself. And you transfer that in an half minute syringe in a cool box for the evaluation. Now, what do we look at when we look into an ABG? First thing that we look into an ABG is the pH. The most important thing is the pH. Now, the pH is the first thing that we look into when we see the ABGs. And this pH tells us that if it is an acidic pH or an alkaline pH. All right, so the acidic pH, the pH is somewhere between 7.35 to 7.45. All right. So as the arrow shows, anything less than 7.35 is acidic. Anything more than 7.45 is alkaline. So first thing first that we do is we see the pH. All right. Why emphasizing so that you do understand that whenever we have an ABG in our hand, we start with the pH. All right. So once we have established if it is an acidic pH or an alkaline pH, we move on to the next components. Okay, now what are the next two components? We have either respiratory component. The respiratory component is the, sorry, what happened? I, let me share. Okay, so we have the respiratory component, which is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide over here. So this tells us if it is, if this is unbalanced, so it tells us either it is a respiratory condition, acidosis or alkalosis. So the second thing that we try to establish either respiratory cause or the metabolic cause and metabolic cause is designated by bicarbonate levels. All right, so first thing pH, second we move to the respiratory part, that is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide or the level of bicarbonate, that is the third part. All right, we can either see the bicarb first or we could see the partial pressure of carbon dioxide first. All right, depends on us. Now, if for example, the partial pressure of uh partial pressure of bicarb, sorry, partial pressure of uh, carbon dioxide is 4.5 kPa to 6 kPa. All right. So anything less than less than. So the, the okay, have to keep in mind, we have to keep in mind the carbon dioxide in an acidic is acidic gas, all right? So the less carbon dioxide means alkaline, alkalosis. More carbon dioxide, that is more than 6 kPa, it, it means 
acidosis. All right, either it is acidosis or uh, it is respiratory acidosis or alkalosis, or there's a compensatory mechanism going on to buffer out the metabolic part. Next, what we have is bicarbonate. Please stop me in between wherever you have a confusion. So the next point is bicarbonate. So bicarbonate has a value of 22 to 26. So bicarbonate less than 22 is going to be metabolic acidosis and bicarbonate more than 26 is going to be metabolic alkalosis or renal compensation. So our acidic uh, acidic component is the carbon dioxide and the basic component is the bicarbonate that creates the alkali alkalinity in the blood and that is the bicarbonate. The, the, the component that creates the acidity in the blood is the carbon dioxide. I hope so far it's clear. Any questions so far? Okay. So once when we have uh, ABG in our hands, just repeating the entire thing, first of all, we establish the pH. We establish the pH. If you do that, establishing the pH, either it is acidic pH or an alkaline pH, then we move on to the next bit to find out either this pH is because of the respiratory component, that it is the partial pressure of carbon dioxide, or the bicarbonate comp component, that is the metabolic component, why is there imbalance or change of value in the pH? All right? Yes, all values come from a single blood test. That is the arterial blood test. That is, that is the reason ABGs as well as arterial blood gases. This sample is not drawn from the ven veins. It is drawn from the arteries, that is the a brachial, uh, a radial brachial or a femoral artery. So most uh, accessible is your radial artery. All right. The other thing that we have is the base excess. Now the base excess is, as the name uh, itself says, it's about talking about the bicarbonate. So sometimes. They do not give you bicarbonate. Instead, they do not uh, give you the, the level of bicarbonate that is 22 to 26. Instead, they give you, uh, give you base excess. Base excess, it is just, uh, uh, base excess is just two. That is two millimoles. If it is more, then it is metabolic alkalosis or compensatory respiratory uh, acidosis. So let's just forget about, uh, forget about the compensation right now. And if it is less, less than, less than two, then it is metabolic acidosis. So alkaline thing that the, that is the bicarbonate is less, then it is going to, to create acidosis, metabolic acidosis. If bicarbonate is more, and it is uh, more than two, then it is going to create metabolic alkalosis. So far, I hope it is clear. Okay, so how do we check? Uh, the uh, the metabolic component in an AVG, we have two things. Either we do carbon uh, bicarbonate levels or base excess. That is more than or less than. All right. I hope it's clear so far. Now, what is compensation? Basically, what happens, it is the body's mechanism of bringing things back to normal. Tries, uh, the body tries to bring the pH to a normal value, either using by using the unaffected uh, component. That is unaffected component could be either the respiratory component or the metabolic component. So this is the compensation. Okay, once we do the questions, it will get more uh clear so term there are two terms that we use in uh, um, when we use compensation it is called as full compensation or partial compensation all right 
full compensation is when the pH has turned normal, has come to normal. Okay, and that is full compensation. In partial compensation, the body is trying to bring the uh, bring the pH back to normal, but it is not has done yet. This is trying to bring the pH to a normal value. It is not yet at the normal value, but it is not yet at the normal value. That is the difference between compensation. So, for example, you have respiratory acidosis. So, in case of a respiratory acidosis, for example, you have the patient has patient has respiratory. All right. So in respiratory acidosis, what we will have, now this is something that I want to tell you, that is the pH is low. All right. Now this is the respiratory component, respiratory part. So here we will be talking about partial pressure of carbon dioxide and which is going to be high. All right. So this is respiratory acidosis where we have more of carbon dioxide gas giving us a respiratory picture, a uh, respiratory acidosis picture. So what about the bicarbonates? Or the base X. All right, this is an example. So the bicarbonate, because it has nothing to do over here, can be very much normal. All right, so this is where it is normal. So this picture tells you that it is not compensated. No compensation. Like that is that the body is not trying to or is not able to do any, uh, bring the pH normal. All right, so this is what happens. But in case, in the same scenario, just a second. Yes, it could be either um, it, uh, renal or respiratory. Yes, compensation can be either of that. Now, in the same scenario, if we have the same thing, so if we have the same scenario, all right, same scenario, but in this scenario, HCO3 is also increased. That is, the bicarbonate level has also increased. That is, what was the bicarbonate was an alkaline component. Uh, so when this is increased, so this is when there is compensation. Compensation. But this is going to be a partial compensation because the pH is still not normal. All right, the pH is still not normal. But if in the same scenario, just give me a minute, let me finish this up. I'll, I'll just take the question. Now here the pH has come to normal, then this is known as full compensation. All right. Now do you get the point? You get these three points. Just have a look at it. So then we can move on further.
That's an achievement for me. That's explained well. So you're getting the points here. Now, do you understand what we mean by no compensation, partial compensation, and full compensation? And do you get the part of the respiratory part, the metabolic part? And what do we look into first? We look into the pH first, then we move on to the next step to decide whether it is a respiratory condition or a metabolic or, or, or renal condition, all right? Either of it. And then we look into, once we have done that, we look into that, is there any compensation? Okay, fine. No compensation, fine. If, if there is a compensation, so either it is a partial compensation or a full compensation, all right? So this is how, this is how we go about. Okay, so far so good. Okay, any question, any question before I move on to the next. So I'm not going to be explaining this later, long term. Uh, compensation harmful? Yes, of course. Uh, 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 but is the compensation harmful? Compensation is, of course, uh, it's good for the body. But of course, we have to see uh, why we have any imbalance, metabolic imbalance. It could be due to a, could be due to a lot of reasons. Many respiratory conditions could be due to metabolic conditions, respiratory like uh, COPD, asthma. Um, we could have in DKA, if you, you, you will be having metabolic acidosis in DKA, uh, vomiting, that is the uh, metabolic condition. Uh, kidney compensation, uh, if it is full complication, why come next time in basic level? Yes, why? Good a question, Dr. Uh, Zardine. The thing is, we are looking at the pH. That's the reason what I told you that once when we have an ABG in our hand, uh, we look into the pH first. So when we see a normal pH, doesn't mean that you have not don't have to see the other components. You have to see the other components to see either those components are normal or not. So when I go further, I'll tell you how do we find out this respiratory acidosis or metabolic acidosis or what. Okay. So yes, we have to see into the other component as well that what is happening. Base is not going to be normal because base is not normal. Carbon dioxide is not, uh, uh, yes, everybody who's vaping should stop vaping. Not good for you, not good for us as well. People who are not uh, smokers. So this is, uh, this is because uh, it is compensating. That's the reason. It is compensating the carbon dioxide level in the blood. So carbon dioxide level is all there but up up there but the bicarbonate level has increased to compensate that high level to neutralize the thing neutralize the ph bring it back to normal that is 7.4 right 7.4 yes okay now this is one method that i call as a tic tac toe method not i but this is something that we normally use during our um, exams or trying to in the in the icus especially uh, a nephro ICU, uh, I used to use this a lot. And what really we do in this? So this one is a very simple method, very simple method. We all play that X zeros, cross, uh, uh, cross and zeros, right? At home, sitting in duty, have nothing to do, patient is asleep. So let's play that. This is what we do uh, sometimes, okay? So putting that into use, this is what we do. Although, 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 honestly speaking, you need to practice a lot of ABGs to be able not to use this, all right? So when you have an ABG, for example, you have an ABG right in front of you right now, just uh, I will take this. I have a plant. All right. So let's forget this for a moment. Now, if we just look into this one first, this uh, values. Now, you have a pH of 7.2. All right. So what is this pH? And now I want you all to type it down there. Let me know if you know it. What is the pH here? 
Yes, this is acidic. Acidosis. Let's use a different color for acidosis. Now, we have to establish it is <laughs> Dr. Dakar is going a little fast. Let's establish it is respiratory acidosis or metabolic acidosis. What are we going to look into? Yes, Dr. Gumeka, good. This is respiratory. Now, can you tell me, is there any compensation or is there no compensation? Compensation is there? Why, doctor, who is with just DR, no compensation? And why do you say there is no compensation? Who says, yes, there is a compensation, give me a reason. Who says, no compensation, give me a reason. Both of you are stuck. Why do you think uh, it, uh, bicarb is more? Because I've put in the normal values here. See, if you see the bicarb value, 22, 26. Yes. Don't forget the value. So just put it in there. So you won't, you you are not going to have a problem. It's okay. It's okay. So this is the, this is what Club One is about. It's about anxiety. You do not know the, to know the topic, but the anxiety is spoiling you. So this is respiratory acidosis with no compensation. Because the bicarb is normal. The body is try not trying to bring it to normal. All right. Now, when we have the tic tac toe method, yes, no compensation, Dr. Nina. Okay. Well, what I did with this tic tac toe method was you could practice in your ICU or this is normal and the big and this is now. The pH is 7.2. So pH is acidic. So it comes here. All right. Now, partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 9. So it is more than 6. So it comes into here in the acidic side. And the bicarb is normal. Yeah, Dr. Asit, just give me two minutes. I'll do that. Don't worry. I'll do it. I plan always plan to uh, recap it. And the bicarbonate is normal. So see? So now the bicarbonate is normal, right? So there is no compensation. And if I want to draw a line across, yep, this is respiratory acidosis with no compensation because our bicarbonate level is normal. Okay, fair enough. I think we got this one. Now next is this. Now, can you tell me?
sorry, Dr. Asif asked me to explain him compensation again. I will do that. Just give me this. Now, Dr. Asif, yes. Uh, compensation. So once we, yes, it's partial compensation. Just give me a second, okay? So once when we start with this, when we start with but reading the pH, establishing that the pH is low, that is, it is acidic. Then we go on to find the different components. Either it is uh, due to metabolic reason or by uh, the uh, respiratory reason. All right. So once we establish that what it is, then we see if there is any compensation. So if you see the first one, there is no compensation here. Although the pH is low, that is acidic. The respiratory acidosis is here because the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is high. All right, and the bicarbonate level is the same. So there is no compensation. The body is not trying to or is not able to compensate at all. Now here, you see that the bicarbonate level has increased. All right, so it has increased, but the pH is still not into normal. So this is a partial compensation. All right, the third one. In this, the bicarbonate level has increased and the pH has come to normal. So this is a full compensation. So full compensation is when the pH has come to normal. Partial compensation is when the other component is trying to buffer or override the component that is creating the problem. All right, like if it was metabolic alkalosis, for example, then the carbon dioxide would increase itself to buffer the effect of bicarbonate. Okay, I hope this makes sense, Dr. Asif. Okay, I hope you get it. All right, now this is done. This is here. Now, yes, this is respiratory acidosis with partial compensation. All right, now I am going to place this. pH is 7.22. pH comes into the acidic part. All right. Bicarbonate, uh, sorry, carbon dioxide, partial pressure of carbon dioxide is 9. Again, it is acidotic. It is going to come here. Now, bicarb is more. So, it is going to come here. So this is respiratory acidosis with partial compensation. Respiratory acidosis with partial compensation. Now, if in the same one, in the same thing, in the same scenario, I would change this to seven point four. All right. In the same thing, I am changing it to seven point seven. Now the pH over here is normal. The pH comes to the normal side. All right. And the rest of the thing is normal. Okay. But the pH, uh, the uh, uh, by carb, uh, carbon dioxide is still on the higher side. Yes. Now, how do you here understand that this is the respiratory part? How do we understand this is the respiratory part here? Because yes, it is fully compensated. Respiratory acidosis, fully compensated. How do we know this is the acidic part? Because, see, uh, it is the respiratory part because the bicarbonate level, because of the bicarbonate. Uh, sorry, bicarbonate, sorry. Because of the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So we know that it is because of this and the pH 
is more um sorry i would put ph here right exactly this way so this is more towards the acidic part so we know that it is yes thank you i am that's what i wanted to tell you now this is 7.39 okay so 7.39 would be somewhere here right somewhere here one uh, yeah somewhere here so uh when it is somewhere there then what we do is it is more onto the acidic side it is more towards the acidic side okay let's do this although it is within the normal but it is it is normal but it is more towards the acidic part all right. So the acidity is caused by the partial pressure of carbon dioxide. That is the reason why we will not call it metabolic alkalosis. Rather, we will be calling it respiratory acidosis with full compensation. This here in this question, we went with, you know, step by scenario. So that is the reason you all were able. But in the exam, you need to see that even if your pH is normal, with a, part, a full compensation, you need to see which side. Yes. So, which side of it is normal? All right. Which side it is normal? Now, if you see this one. this one can you see this one now if i Is there a compensation? Does it also mean that the pH has more than yes? Uh, doctor, I'm so sorry, I didn't see the question. Does it also, yes, Dr. Uh, Ragis Mohammed? I'm sorry if I'm pronouncing your name wrong, Dr. Mohammed. I'll call Dr. Mohammed. Yes, if it is going towards the alkalotic side, big side, that is here within the normal. So yes, you will call it that. Now let's do this one. Okay, now let's do this one. Now the pH is normal, right? So we have the pH which is normal. Just give me a minute, I'll see the question. I'll just see the message, just give me a minute. Now here it is partial pressure of carbon dioxide. Oh, sorry. Sorry. It is less than... It is just four. All right. So the uh, let's see. Now it is four. Four is less. Four point five two. It is four point five two six. All right. This is partial pressure of carbon dioxide. So four is less. So it is here. Okay. Then bicarb. Bicarb is less. So it is alkalosis. When the bicarb is less. Now here we are confused that the pH is in normal limits because it is in a full compensation. Now we have to see where is pH on the spectrum? Okay. <coughs> Blood pH is falling into which spectrum? So it is 4.2. It is falling into the alkalotic part. So this is metabolic. Yes, slightly basic. 
So this is metabolic alkalosis with partial compensation. No, we will not call it partial compensation because the pH has come to normal. So this is a full compensation. All right. So a a bicarb. Okay. Uh, uh, is how that the bicarb has increased and is uh bicarb ha is low. All right. So this is full compensation. It is basically occurring from respiratory alkalosis. If you see that the partial pressure of carbon dioxide is more compared to bicarb. All right. This is respiratory uh, alkalosis. Now, let me give you one more. If you have a pH, bicarbonate is low, yes. If the bicarbonate is low, it means it is the acidic side, side right? Just give me a minute. I'm trying to. Yes, I'm here. There's no audio because I'm trying to give you a question. Playing you better. Okay. This is so All right, now can you tell me what it is? Yes, it is respiratory alkalosis. Respiratory alkalosis. All right. Next.
Let's do this one. Now this one. Yes, that was respiratory alkalosis, not compensated. Now this one. <clears throat> Metabolic. Alkalosis, yes. All right. Yes, metabolic alkalosis. Now, uh, if I change this to... What could be this? I can't be just nine. So this is not compensated. See, we have a value of 20 to 26. So anything less than 22 is going to be basic. More than, uh, sorry, it, less than 22 is going to be acidic. So this is not, comp uh, yeah. So it's fine. It's respiratory acidosis. There is no compensation. This is respiratory acidosis. This is a picture mostly you will find in DKA. All right. This is something that you will find in DKA. So this is respiratory acidosis, diabetic ketoacidosis. Yes. All right. With this, uh, we are done with the topic. Now, just, just giving you a scenario. You will be given this. And you could be, they could even tell you that, yes, it is respiratory acidosis. And thank you, doctor. Uh, you have respiratory acidosis. We're giving you the all the scenario, the patient came in with, uh, for example, um, um, a, a patient came in with diarrhea and vomiting, uh, had a cosmo uh, breath, and uh, uh, and he's uh, complaining of vague abdominal pain. He's, he looks pale, lethargic dehydrated and this is what you have on your um apgs and the abg shows a respiratory acidosis so what thing that comes to, you, to your mind is the patient is diabetic ketoacidosis so what will you do what will be your initial management all right because this is this could be a 11 year old child 
a young child. So where there is type 1 diabetes. So that type 1 diabetes usually uh, present with BKA, right? So this is the scenario that we would, would be given with giving you the picture of respiratory acidosis. And then they will be asking you what would be your initial management. No, not a ABC's management first, no. They will be telling you that the child would initially manage. What will you do next? And in the options, there is going to be IV fluids. In the options, there could be insulin administration, call your superior, uh, management of potassium levels. So what you will do next is you will give IV fluids initially. That is your initial management, right? In case, in case, in case, they do not give you a diabetic ketoacidosis picture. Or they do not give you a respiratory acidosis picture. What will be your initial investigation? Could be a question if they haven't given you the ABGs. All right, so what are you going to do over there? You have this picture. You know it's an 11-year-old, your 12-year-old, or 13-year-old child, and type 1 diabetes is, uh, or you could, they could even give you a picture of this uh, picture or uh, the scenario. They could even add, has a family history of diabetes in first degree relatives. That is maybe the father, the mother, the grandmother, sorry, the father, mother, other first degree relatives. So that, in that case, again, you are going to ask for an ABG. Yes, exactly. So I hope it is, uh, is ABGs are clear to you all and you are able to do them. Okay, any questions regarding ABGs? Any questions regarding um, lab one, UKMLA pathway? Please, uh, we just have two, three minutes more and ask me. Thank you so very much. The concept is very much clear. It was a very difficult topic for me, but uh, it's now very easy for me now. All right, then. Thank you very much. Any question? I haven't got your introduction. Oh, I'm Dr. Shehla Tehseen. UKML has already been implemented. They, the best part of UK is that they do not, of any for an exam, uh, is this uh, um, that they do not implement anything overnight. They implement it slowly, gradually. They see that if the candidate is a, candidates are able to do it. So they implement it slowly. Uh, slowly. So UK MLA is already done. No, I'm not right now working in UK. I did my attachments in UK and I'm doing my training in Pakistan because I have another plan and pathway route. Uh, I'm Dr. Shaila Tessin and um, I am basically a PLAV1 mentor. No, uh, I wouldn't say that. Uh, it sucks, but uh, system does. It's a beautiful country, honestly speaking. We all have a right to have our own opinions. Please, <laughs> I wouldn't comment on that. So, how do I boost your uh, boost our uh, CVs? Are we um, we try uh, to do as many put in as many clinical uh, things that we have done, any uh, CME hours that we do, any workshops that we attend. We need to put in all that. So that is how we boost our CVs, and uh, <clears throat> uh, that that's what it is. Yeah, that would, that's your extra activity and that really comes a lot. All right, that's a, your extra activity that really comes a lot. And Dr. Um, I don't know your full name, uh, the message that you just set in, we have to start doing things at our level, okay? Uh, it's not the country that sucks, that's the people that sucks. Okay, Dr. Samir, so it's the people that make a country, okay? That's important to understand. Yeah, two are more than enough, Dr. Asif. That's uh, a fair number. Don't give them a lot of it. They usually give you a option of five. That's what I remember. Uh, five. And don't give a lot of them. They count on three. Yes, they count on three. Initial three. So put in the uh, LORs of people who know you. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. Lovely having you all here. Any questions, any query? I think you can always ask us on the WhatsApp. Okay. Take care, love is all the best.